name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we have the honor and privilege of having Enoch from the Urban Gardener YouTube channel here at our home garden. Excellent. Thanks for being with us. Nice to have me here with you. So we just recorded an episode where we did a tour of the entire backyard garden here yeah. at my property. What an awesome garden too, excellent. And we've done hundreds of videos here. Yep. So if you wanna kinda of see it all done in a matter of minutes, again, be sure to check out um, his YouTube that he'll be publishing later on this month of April. And I just wanna share with you one of the things that Enoch did to my Haas avocado tree, which is here in front of us. It, was once big and now it's like so small. What and did I do? What did I do? <laughs> and this was one of our principles that we're talking about and I've taught it a few times, but I'm gonna be talking more about it this year, is preserving the heart of your tree. And the heart of the tree I like defining as being the tree trunk and those lower branches. And when they're lower, like, we've, like we're going to be training this particular Haas avocado to have a tree trunk that's low, and primary branches that's low, we're gonna be able to control sunburn, insects, and rodents within the heart of the tree a lot easier than if we have a heart of the tree with, again, tree trunk and higher branches that are now exposed to sunburn and it's probably out of sight because it's so high as what's going on in that Fuerte avocado tree that's just behind me. And that's where we're going next. So come and follow me. So, all right, Charles, you've got this really, really cool avocado tree, which I'm really <laughs> jealous about because I can't grow avocados where I'm from. But what you're explaining to me here is that we're going to be cutting this down. We're going to be cutting it like in half. We're going to cut it in half? At least in half. Oh, wow. All of this up here, this great tree, we're going to take down. I know. I would. We've already, we've been fortunate to harvest. This was our last Fuerte avocado, let me share that with you. You can see how beautiful, um, it's an oval shaped green avocado, unlike the Fuertes that are more round and black, but this is one of the higher rankings. I'd say top 10 um, varieties of avocados is the Fuerte avocado. It's also a type B avocado, so we've got the Haas that you've just cut for me, yeah. um, and then we've got the Fuerte that we're going to cut now together, yeah. and the Fuerte is a type B. So Haas type A, Fuerte type B, they're both self-pollinating, so one tree will make you fruit without another um, avocado, but by having an A and a B type variety, right. you'll have an extra five to 10% more avocados per tree. So wow. we've got now the two varieties, but what we're gonna do is, yes, we're gonna cut it in and half. I can understand because the other one that we just did, it's a smaller one, it wasn't that drastic. I cut it. I know. I didn't feel too bad about doing that, but I look at this tree and I go, you really want to cut it like that? You want to cut it that much <laughs> off? But here's my question though. What's going to be the purpose of cutting a tree like that though? Yeah. So the purpose of cutting the tree down, and it's an issue I've been dealing with over the last two years. This plant has only been planted in the ground less than three years ago. Again, a three gallon size tree, just like the one you just pruned. Yeah. So that little thing is going to turn into this monster of a tree in three short years with proper care and management. And we've also been feeding it with the six macros plus fertilizer, which gives your plants all of the macronutrients that plants need, not just the NPK that's found on most fertilizers you'll find on your garden shelf. So it's getting all of the macronutrients, a lot of micronutrients, and that's why it's just performing so amazingly well. Yeah. The reason we're going to prune it, and again, we've done educational lessons where I kept on removing the central leader from the top. We brought in the branches up above to hopefully bring more life to these lower branches, but one by one, these lower branches in the canopy that are just as old as these higher, larger branches that are almost the thickness of my arm are dying back because of the shade that's being created by the upper canopy. The upper canopy is making the sugars and, and capitalizing on all the resources of the sun and to the detriment of all these lower branches. And I want to change that around. I want to bring the canopy down so that it fruits at a lower height but the primary reason is i want to protect as i always call it the heart of the tree yes. i want to protect the tree trunk and i want to protect the primary branches coming off the tree trunk and with the branches being over my head i can't whitewash it and i can't maintain it as easily as i otherwise would if it was closer to like my hip area or closer to my knees as we've done to some of the other fruit trees here on our property so that's the reason we're going to be pruning it and half. Excellent. 
So again, before we get to pruning, I want to demonstrate and show some of the burning that's happening up in the canopy. There's some smaller branches, but there's also some major branches up there suffering first, second, and third degree burns. A first degree burn would be just like a discoloration of the skin, yep. kind of like the pink you've got on your cheeks from going to the beach the yes. last few days. <laughs> um, and a second degree burn would be, you know, like some pain happening um, at the skin level or at the bark level. Third degree burn means the bark is now damaged, the underlying cambium tissue is also damaged, and the plant is now really living and thriving off the back side of the plant, which is the north side, which is the shady side of the plant. Um, and that part of the plant will not be sunburned and the plant will thrive off of that. But the plant will never be as healthy and as, as successful if it's not dealing with all these burn issues. And let me share with you some of the branches above me that are burning. If you take a look here, this here is a third degree burn. You can take a look if I remove these branches and these, like these flowers are like covering it all up right now, but this is a third degree burn. We're not just dealing with a little discoloration of the skin or, you know, it's, it's the sunny side, but you can see that it's completely damaged and it's even, that's callus. So it's starting to callus over the wounds and we can whitewash it so it can start healing and hopefully recover and grow over. But rather than dealing with year after year and month after month of repair to this tree for the life of the tree, we're only in it year three, and we're hoping to enjoy this plant for many years. Whatever pruning we do to it this year, being so early in the year, we're in April, yep. we're gonna whitewash it to prevent further burning as it goes into summer month, but it'll regrow most of whatever we cut out this year, and we can still enjoy the same amount of flowers and ultimately enjoy fruit next year. So we're only losing one year, but we're gonna gain decades of delicious and a much healthier structure avocado tree for the many more years to come here on this property. So all right, Charles, it's time to cut the tree. It is. Where do you think on the tree would make the best and most optimum cut? So there's some choices. With the fig tree that we have on the corner of the property, uh, with a video we did about two and a half years ago called OMG, Why Cut the Giving Fig Tree? Mm -hmm. We cut it down to just inches above the ground. We went that low like within a foot of the ground with the fig tree and it rebounded. Um, and this was a cut we did like in the middle of summer with the goal of getting new branches, which it did. But when you cut that low and without any branches and any leaves on the plant, right. you risk the plant going to a terrible shock and possibly I mean, plant you're just death. just cutting the whole head, everything off of the tree. So All of it. Yeah, it's as if you're telling the tree, I hate stuff. you. We're not doing that to this tree. We're going to keep some of these lower branches which will be more manageable for the years to come. And I'm even hopeful that some of the branches that have died back further along the tree trunk will also come pushing out some new leaves and ultimately new branches. And we'll then manage that selection over the course of this growing season. So like I said, I do expect this tree to grow a solid five to 10 feet this grow season. So before wow. October, November, December, you're gonna see that this tree will still stand eight to 10 feet tall despite what we're about to do. So you're ready to cut? I can't wait to see that. You ready? Absolutely. So I'm giving you the weapon. Oh no, again. Here we yes, go. I'm gonna have you again cut my trees and that way the blame is off of my hands and the blood or the sap is on your hands. Oh my. Yeah, the pressure's on. <laughs> All right, so where exactly do you wanna cut this? So what we're gonna do, if I can just pull back on this branch, the goal is we're gonna preserve these primary branches that we've got. And again, we're telling the plant to continue using your leaves to make the sugars and necessary um, nutrients and proteins for plant life. While in the meantime, we're gonna cut it and encourage the plant. We're gonna actually increase the vigor of this plant tremendously. And it's gonna continue pushing new life throughout the entire tree trunk. And then we're gonna have even some more branches to select and train and manage over the course of the rest of the growing season. So I would recommend that you're gonna prune right above these two branches. The goal is to allow about a quarter of an eighth of an inch above it and and also cut in an angle will allow moisture if it rains again this um, rainy season here in Southern California. But any moisture that lands on the plant, you want it to roll right off. So the goal is to also cut at an angle and not straight across. So the honor is yours. Have fun. Yeah. 
So Enoch, before you go any further, okay. another important pruning tip when it comes to pruning a branch that large, we don't want it tumbling down with all of that weight and tearing the bark on its way right. down into, again, we're trying to preserve the heart of the tree. And we want to make sure that that weight doesn't rip the bark. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the upper weight. So I'm going to help you with that real quick. The blood, I mean, the sap is still on your hands. So I'm just going to remove some of the weight off the tree by cutting some of these larger branches that are here. And here we go. Ooh, that brought in some light. If you want to come in a little closer now, if you take a look with the camera, you can see that the bark ripped and the cut is all jagged because of all the weight that was coming down. By lightening it, we're going to be preventing this horrible pruning job from happening to our final cut, which Enoch's going to be doing for us right in this area over here. Well, let's continue. So in addition to controlling the burn, we're also gonna have a more manageable size fruit tree to harvest those fruits than having a canopy that's already starting above your head. Well, let's continue. That was impressive. You're pretty strong, Enoch. Way to go. Woo. Again, remember, Three short years, you'll have a tree this large. So here we go. We've got all of these branches. What do you think the next important tip's gonna be now that it has no canopy and it's exposed to full sun? What should we do? I think it's time to whitewash this, isn't it? It's time to whitewash. That's the gardening tip and that's the gardening lesson. We're gonna do that using now the three-in-one plant guard by Ivory Organics. Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents for uses on your fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs for use in organic production and healthier than latex paint and tar-based products. All right, so we're going to apply the whitewash to this tree now that we've got it all pruned up, Charles. So my question for you then is, we've just exposed the top of this tree here by cutting it off. Correct. Are you going to want to whitewash? that exposed area of the tree? Absolutely, so the top pruned damaged area that we've just created, we're going to protect it also from keeping beetles, termites, and other disease from entering it until eventually it's gonna take not one year, but many years for that wound to heal as these branches will eventually become as thick as this tree trunk and heal over these wounds. So it's gonna take a few years of protection. We're gonna be using the three-in-one plant guard now, not for the primary goal as we're doing today to protect it from sunburn, but the emphasis is gonna be on the insect control. The seven natural oils that are in here include, um, and I can share this with you, are castor and cinnamon and cloves and garlic and peppermint and rosemary and spearmint. All natural ingredients. And all of these plants that are naturally insect proof. And mm -hmm. so um, by incorporating into the product, you're gonna have a, a plant that's naturally being protected from insect invasion, and invaders while also giving it that whitewash protection from the extremes of weather, whether it be summer sunburn or in the winter, winter sun scald. So I'll give you the honors. You can start painting, I'll get my own brush. You can start, I'll get a brush. Here to help you. Excellent. So we're going to do the primary trunk and we're also going to protect the branches as well as you've already started. 
And it's most important to protect the top as well as the south side of the branches. Those are most exposed to getting burnt. And unlike using a latex paint, which if you put on your house, 100 years later, you're still gonna have paint on your house. When you put it on your tree, as the tree continues to grow within one to three years, it's gonna have new bark and all that paint's not gonna end up in your soil indefinitely. And that's the reason we're using the Ivory Organics 301 Plant Guard product, which is registered material for use in organic agriculture. So as we discussed, we're gonna go all the way down to the ground level and basically coat the entire trunk and all of the primary branches from the tree. And that'll basically conclude it and we're done. And thank you so very much for all of your assistance this afternoon. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Charles, thank you for so much for having me over here. You know, right. you uh, just massacre this tree, even though it's gonna be way better for the tree it's, and it's gonna be a much better, better uh, production. It's gonna be way better. And thank you again um, so much, Enoch. And if you wanna see that tour again of all of the fruit trees growing here at my home garden, be sure to check out the Urban Gardener with my friend Enoch. Yes, please come check out my channel. And if you've enjoyed this educational lesson by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to get these educational moments as soon as they become released and available. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.